hello welcome to our morning meeting hello uh, we're here with blossom and lotus today so come on in let us know you're here let us know where you're from and we'll give you guys a shout out good morning everybody hello welcome to our morning meeting with ambassadors good morning today we have our painted turtle ambassadors blossom and lotus this is a uh, lotus little lotus and she um she's very very sweet these two um are both with us because they were kept as somebody's pets and have issues going on with them now because of that but these guys are going to hang out with us today so let us know that uh you're here and i'll be happy to give you guys a shout out good morning everyone hello um we at the center are gearing up for another hot day so these guys um have a nice pool that they get to go swim in during the day when it's really really warm uh, but these guys do like it a little bit a little bit toasty you'll see them often basking on logs on um, lakes or ponds and uh, because they're often seen sunning themselves good morning Tiffany hello uh, because they're often seen sunning themselves sometimes these guys are colloquially known as sun turtles so a lot of people will um, will call them sun turtles as well but they're called painted turtles and they are called painted turtles because of the beautiful painted stripes that are on their neck and their skin. It looks like they were, somebody took a paintbrush and just painted right down there, right down their shell. So they are called painted turtles and they are very, very sweet. Um, the Center for Wildlife has a lot of turtle ambassadors. These guys are just one, um, one species that we have so we have our two painted turtle ambassadors um, I'll show you guys um, blossom in a second because she's also she's also very sweet but um, oh, but uh, these guys are gonna hang out with us good morning good morning John hello hello um, so Lotus came to us. Her story's a little sad, but she is doing really, really well now. So, no, there, there's a happy ending to it. Um, she came to us after a real estate agent found her in a home that they were selling um, that had been abandoned. It was foreclosed on. And uh, Miss Lotus here was found in a bucket of murky black water. She didn't have any way to get out of that water to bask in the sun and that is actually a really really important behavior that these guys do um, and it's a way that they are able to clean their shells so the UV rays and the heat and drying out kills off a lot of the bacteria that these guys will be swimming in in the water and uh, because she unfortunately uh, was left in that brackish black water without a way to clean her shell, she developed a, a, an infection of the shell called shell rot. And this is um, something that we see a lot in like crustaceans that live in our oceans. Um, as ocean temperatures rise, a lot of lobsters and crabs will start to develop shell rot because the warmer temperatures support um, colonies of bacteria on shells. But she was in um, kind of this murky, gross water that, um, that supported that fungal and bacterial infection on her shell. So when she came to us about um, three or four years ago, she was really, really light sensitive or photo sensitive. She did not like going out in the sunlight because she'd never really been exposed to it before. Uh, but after um, some time, she did learn to love it. And now she loves to bask. She loves to sit under her heat lamp. She likes to, um, she likes to, you know, dr let herself completely dry off and that helps to kill off her shell. The bacteria. Um, her shell rot was pretty bad, pretty significant when we got her. So she um, actually, her shell was squishy. It was really, really squishy. Um, and we suspect that she is actually um, supposed to be much bigger than this, that her age would indicate that she's um, probably a bit older than um, she looks uh, with this tiny, tiny little shell. Uh, she should probably be the same size as our other painted turtle, uh, Lotus, uh, Blossom, who I can introduce you guys to. Um, but her shell is a little bit messed up now. It's a little bit funky. Good morning, Kim. Hello. Good morning. All caps, good morning. Um, so you can see this lower shell, we call this the plastron, comes out to about here. And that's normal. She would want to be able to tuck her neck in. Uh, to protect her her head 
And then this upper shell, because it was lacking blood flow for so long, because it was eaten away by so many bacteria and everything, it has not grown out over the top of her head. And she would very easily get chomped on in the wild with, um, with a shell like that. So her shell should come out to uh, meet this underside here. So you can see it's quite a bit receded. But what's great news is that over the last three or four years, thank you, Mary, you're so sweet. Um, out over the last few years, her, um, her shell has actually improved really greatly. When we first got her, she was, um, she was very, very tiny. Like I said, her shell was squishy and it was all just one um, complete kind of um, plane of dark shell that was really, really rotted and gross. Um, but now, since she's kind of been healing up, she's actually developed these puzzle pieces, which are normally on our shells of turtles. But um, Miss Lotus has only really developed these in the last few years. So um, these are called scutes, these puzzle pieces, and they're the growth plates that these shells grow from. So she's developed them in the last few years. They're still not perfect. They still have a ways to go. Um, but her shell is definitely improving um, over the last few years. And we've gotten her x-rayed to make sure she's doing okay. But you can still see there's some areas where she needs to develop more vasculature in her shell. Those areas where it looks kind of dead. Um, she doesn't have a lot of blood flow to those areas so that will improve over time as well we're hoping um, the areas that are nice and yellow and um and like the underside of her shell or the top of her shell those will have plenty of blood flow they're doing a lot better than they used to be so we're really happy with the way that miss uh, lotus is um is progressing but she probably won't be ever be able to be released back into the wild and she's been with humans for most of her life too so that would make that hard um, Mary asks about any updates on the little baby Osprey that came in. I do not know, um, anything about that Osprey. I just came in from my weekend, so I don't know, um, if it was brought to us or if it was brought to another, um, facility, but, um, I can definitely check on that. And, uh, we aren't doing, um, we aren't doing Osprey or, um, patient checks at the moment just because we don't have the staff, but, um, but I will definitely check because I love Osprey. They are some of my favorite birds. Um, and there are, uh, <laughs> I know Katie, she's like, excuse me, I want to go back in the water. Um, she, uh, the Ospreys are some of my favorite. There is a nest of Osprey um, right uh, after exit three on um, the highway coming north. Um, on the right hand side right near the Kittery outlets it kind of um, is up on a telephone pole and it looks out over the um, the river there and every morning I get to drive in and see them and they're they're some of my favorites I love Osprey so much but I will definitely check on that because uh, if we did I want to hear about it um, good morning Chuck good morning oh thank you so much Chuck yeah we had another post to go up uh, with a donation button on there um, so that everybody knows there are donation buttons on most of our posts and, uh, and on this video and we really really appreciate all of the donations that we get from our social media it's definitely been keeping us afloat uh, during this really challenging time so thank you guys so much for donating um, and as always there's a donate button here um, but there are also on the Facebook page, on our homepage for our website. So lots of donation opportunities. Um, let me introduce you guys to Blossom. Hi, Sharon. Good morning. She is so beautiful. Um, this is our good morning, Anne in Topsfield. Hello. Good morning, Katie. Uh, this is Blossom. Blossom has been with us for a long, long time. She's been with us for like over 10 years, but she was also kept as a pet. Somebody had her as a pet uh, for many years. And the problem with keeping turtles as pets is that they actually have a lot of um, pretty complicated care requirements that people don't consider when they're getting a turtle. So um, often people will see turtles for sale in pet stores or um, 
in the case of painted turtles, they'll take them from the wild and they'll think that they are easy to care for, that they, um, you know, you just get turtle pellets from the pet store, you give them to them, they'll be fine, you give them some water, they'll be fine, but they actually have very complicated um, care needs and the food that these guys get is really, really important, just like it's important for us, but the food that they get is really important for developing proper bones. Their nutrition is really key to, um, to making sure that their shells develop properly. And if they're fed just the turtle pellets from the store, they usually don't get a complete enough diet to, um, to meet all of those nutritional needs. So Miss Blossom here was kept as a pet for many years. And um, unfortunately, because she was fed an improper diet, she started to develop this um, condition that's called metabolic bone disease. And what it is is basically a lack of nutrients in her food. So a lack of nutrients like calcium, uh, like phosphorus, like um, potassium, and um, also probably a lack of light. It can happen because of a lack of light as well. So lack light just like it does for us, stimulates these guys to make vitamin D. Vitamin D helps them to absorb calcium. And she um, developed metabolic bone disease because her shell could no longer absorb calcium um, and build on itself. So uh, what's interesting is you can actually see that her shell is a little deformed now because it wasn't getting enough light and um, it was reaching up towards the light to get more vitamin D. Um, so you can see these um, these shell curves right here in the back, they don't protect her legs anymore. This shell should come down like this and protect her back feet. She should be able to tuck her feet up in there and be totally protected, but because of um, this shell reaching up towards the light, um, she is kind of exposed back feet, and so she would most likely lose those to a predator in the wild. She also has some um, issues with the front of her shell there, so both of our our painted turtles live with us because of some pretty significant shell deformities um, that they would not be able to survive within the wild. And it's really down to proper nutrition in the case of um, Miss Blossom. And for both of them, it's, um, it's probably down to a lack of light and a lack of an ability to bask and produce vitamin D. Uh, good morning, Annie from um, Alabama. That's so cool. Hello. Good morning, Naomi from Rhode Island. Um, Annie would like to know um, if it's bad to relocate a turtle to a different, different but similar environment. So a lot of people will um, do this when they see a turtle on the road. They want to get it out of that area because it's dangerous. There's a roadway. Um, and so they'll put it in their backyard or someplace that they think is a good habitat for that turtle. And it is um, not advisable to do this just because these guys have such a strict GPS in their brains of where they need to go what their territory is, where their habitat is, where the right um, areas to hunt and to bask and to lay their eggs are, that when you remove them from that habitat, they'll spend the rest of their season trying to reconfigure, relocate where they're going. So um, in the case of a lot of turtles, they will nest in the same place every year. They'll go to the top of a a mountain or a, a hill and lay their eggs. And then, especially for like box turtles, and, um, and some other species of turtles, they're, they are very, what we call nest site fidelitous. It means that they always return to the same nest site. And these guys, painted turtles, don't necessarily do that, but it's still not advisable to remove them from the area that you find them in. What we want, like to say to do is to keep them moving along on their journey in the direction they were going and try to, um, try to just get them you know, on the other side of the road in the direction they were going far away from the road so that they probably won't have to, you know, they won't have to cross again. They're out of harm's way, but you don't want to necessarily remove them from the whole locale because then they won't know where they're going. They have a really, really good idea of where they're headed in their, um, in their heads. So we want to keep them, keep them oriented if we can. I have a, um, a little mealworm treat. We'll see if Miss Blossom wants that. Hi, hey, what's that? You want a mealworm? Do you see it? So um, turtles actually have beaks, just like birds do. And uh, you can see 
Miss Blossom has, I don't know how well focused that is, but Miss Focus, Miss Blossom actually has these two sharp little uh, points on the front of her beak that kind of look like fangs. They're not teeth or anything, they're just like part of her beak, but they're really important for helping her to hunt. These guys are fantastic hunters, they're insectivores, and they, um, they're really, really good at hunting for bugs in the water. So those little fangs that you see are really important for helping her to uh, bite and chomp on, on bugs. And she does bite um, people too, so <laughs> she's, she's fierce. She's a fierce little lady. Um, thank you, Chuck, that's so sweet. Yeah, so we definitely want to encourage people to, um, to help turtles across the road, to help turtles uh, when they are nesting and help them to get to where they're going. They do move around a lot. Um, especially in our area where we are, we have a lot of turtles that move along the roadway um, here that leads to the Center for Wildlife. And so we will often um, escort turtles across the road. A lot of times with these smaller guys, they'll run away from you so fast that you don't even get a chance to like pick them up. You kind of are just ushering them across the, across the road, but they are, um, they're, they're pretty speedy. What's that? You want a bug? Yeah. Oh, you almost got it. I was afraid you were going to bite me. Yeah, it doesn't feel too good when they bite. What's that? So, um, so let's see. Oh, thank, thank you, Annie. These guys can live a pretty long time. They can live 20 to 30 years. Um, in captivity, they usually don't live as long because they're not necessarily cared for right, correctly but they can live 20 to 30 years. And in the wild, they usually can live that long. So uh, what's cool is you'll often see these guys in pretty big groups. Uh, a lot of times uh, painted turtles will live in areas that are um, good for them and that'll attract lots of them. And um, so you'll find a lot of them living in the same area and they're pretty social with each other. They, um, they get along pretty well and you'll often see them kind of fighting over sunlight. You'll see one like stacked up on top of the other one. Um, and Lotus does this to Blossom all the time. She'll climb on top of her shell to get closer to the light. So you kind of see them stacked up um, in their tank. They're really sweet. Um, the interesting thing about these guys is they are not considered endangered or threatened in Maine. They're one of a few species that are not, but they, um, they, are, they do have some things that they deal with. And one of the things that these guys have to contend with is uh, other species of turtle that are released into their habitat. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of turtles are kept as pets and um, many people don't realize how complicated their care requirements are. So what happens is a lot of people will get a turtle and have it as a pet for a while and then wanna get rid of it because it's, um, it's really complicated to take care of them. And so what they'll do is they think uh, they assume that it's a wild animal that it'll be able to survive on its own in the wild and sometimes this is true but in the case of a lot of the turtles that people are buying in pet stores they're actually non-native species so um, in pet stores in um, some states not in Maine it's not legal in Maine anymore but in some states you can find red-eared sliders for sale in pet stores and up north the red-eared slider is not native to our area and they actually will outcompete. Um, the painted turtles for food. So a lot of uh, people will release red-eared sliders into our ponds and our streams up here, and they will um, make life more difficult for our, for our painted turtles. And they also are not adapted to live this far north, so they will, um, they will have a hard time living in uh, our colder climate up here. Um, but before the winter comes and when it's spring and if they can survive the winter some of them can um they will kind of make it harder for these guys to survive in the wild so um so these guys appreciate it if they if you don't remove them from the wild and if you don't release non-native turtles into their habitat that's they appreciate that um so like i said it's not necessarily legal for um for red-eared sliders to be sold in pet stores in maine anymore but um but it is still something that these guys face. And a lot of people do have red-eared sliders, but they don't realize when they buy a little baby red-eared slider at the, at the pet store and it's this big that it's gonna get it to be up to about the size of a dinner plate and that it could live 60 years. Red-eared sliders can get really, really big. Painted turtles usually don't get much bigger than Miss Blossom here. 
uh, but they can still live a very long time, 20 to 30 years. So turtles in general are very, very long lived animals. Um, she's doing a really good job of showing you guys her beautiful webbed feet. Um, we will obviously as associate these webbed feet with um, somebody who lives in the water, an aquatic animal. She is of course an aquatic animal so these guys are really great at swimming they're very quick in the water people always assume that turtles are slow but uh, painted turtles are really really fast swimmers and they're also pretty speedy on land too they can really book it when they want to uh, but those incredible web toes really help them to push water to paddle water um, and they also those claws help to dig and to uh, get good grip on rocks and um, logs and things. Hi. Hello. What are you looking at? Yeah. Um, so these guys have amazing adaptations for being in water. They're very, very fast. Something else that um, you can kind of see is that they have a very flat shell. So their shell is pretty skinny. Um, turtles that live in the water are going to be shaped kind of like this. They're going to be flat and skinny. So they cut through the water. They don't produce a lot of drag. That's another thing is that this shell now that it's turned up towards the sun actually produces so much drag that she probably wouldn't be as fast as she would need to be in the water. Um, but they, they are very, very speedy. And usually turtles that live on land will have a higher, more domed shell. So tortoises, for example, have those tall shells. Um, box turtles are known for that tall domed shell. And um, on land, that's okay, that's fine, that works pretty well for them. But in the water, that would produce a lot of drag. So that's one of the ways that you can kind of tell an aquatic turtle from a, a terrestrial tortoise or turtle is the shape of that shell. Um, these guys don't have the ability to fold up their shell like a box turtle. They have one completely armored plastron down here. And in the wild, they would normally tuck all of their limbs inside here to protect them. And those the shell would come down to meet over their legs so that they would be protected. Um, and, you know, there are other species of turtle out there that don't all have, you guys are doing kind of a second shed right now, that don't kind of have this armored plastron. They, um, they might only have a little like breastplate. So snapping turtles, for example, they don't have a fully armored underside to their shell. They just have this little breastplate that comes down in the middle. And so they have all sorts of other ways of protecting themselves like snapping beaks and sharp claws and things. Um, but they usually are not as heavily armored as our painted turtles. Um, so something just fell off of blossom and this is uh, pretty normal. Oh no, I dropped it. But um, during the summer months when these guys are out basking a lot, they will start to um, shed these little puzzle pieces. So these puzzle pieces again are called scutes. You guys can see um, her scutes pretty well. And these actually will kind of flake off and shed off um, during the warmer months. So uh, when, they, when they shed off, underneath is another layer of keratin. It's the same thing that our fingernails are made of. And they, um, they help to keep the shell healthy by regenerating every so often. It's just like a snake sheds its skin. But underneath those scutes, underneath that keratin is actually bone. So um, when they, you know, this is very, very good at protecting them. They're really, um, really, really well armored. So I'll put Miss Blossom back in the water and get Lotus out one last time so we can say goodbye to her. But uh, we're going to put you back in the water and you can eat some worms. Okay. We have some worms over here to keep them occupied. Hi. So we'll just say goodbye to Miss Lotus here. Um, as you can see, Lotus is much smaller than Blossom, but we actually suspect that they're the same, around the same age, and that uh, Blossom is just so much larger because she was able to grow and had some food. Um, but Miss Blossom here, or Miss Lotus here, we suspect her diet was pretty um, key to stunting her growth. So she, um, if you look at the little rings on her shell, you should be able to um, you should be able to count how many rings there are and that will give you some indication of age at least in younger turtles you can do this but um, but with these guys you know once they get older sometimes those rings wear away um, but when you we count miss 
Lotus's little rings on her shell that kind of indicate how old she is, how many growing seasons she's had, um, that it indicates that she's about the same age as Blossom, which I just, am just floored by that she's about half the size, um, but it really shows how much her growth was stunted. Um, Annie, yeah, so Annie, we, um, we, you know, I've been working with these guys for a long time and we're fairly certain after years of handling them and not having any issues that they don't have any um, bugs like um, salmonella. Sometimes you can um, contract salmonella from wild turtles. Um, it just lives in the water that lives on and then can uh, get on their shells. So we always advise, um, you know, washing hands after touching turtles, not touching them if you don't have to. Um, and also our hands can have some nasty oils and chemicals on them from lotions or, or hand sanitizers or anything like that. So you always want to be careful when you're handling these guys. Um, and we, um, we certainly don't want to give them any sort of um, diseases or contract anything from them. But I've been working with Lotus and Blossom for five years now and I've never had any issues with salmonella so I'm pretty certain I also clean their tank fairly religiously so I know uh, where these guys are living they live in a, um, a pretty clean tank inside during uh, the evening and then they go outside into a nice outdoor big pool that we set up for them and um, we have never had any issues with them uh, passing along salmonella they might have bugs on like uh, germs on their shell but um, for the most part we are probably inoculated with those at this point, working with um, all of these animals at the Center for Wildlife. I like to joke that I have a pretty good immune system from all the dirt that I play in every day. So, um, so yeah, we, I, you know, probably should be better about not touching my face when I'm handling these guys. It's just a, um, something that we have to, we have to get used to, but uh, yeah, I've never had any issues from these guys. They're so sweet. Hi, Carolyn. Hello, Molly. Good morning. Hi. Hello. Say hi to Molly. Yeah. So you can see her little beak. What I love about, um, about painted turtles is their markings are usually never kind of exactly the same. Um, so if you look at Lotus's face, she has one half on um, this side or this side that is, um, has a little orange mustache you guys can see. And then on the other side, she doesn't. So she has kind of this one lopsided mustache that I just think is really cute. Hi, you're so sweet. These two are very feisty. They love to play together. Um, they're very funny um, and they really, really enjoy the public. They're very social with people. So they live in a tank that's right next to our front door. And when people come to visit, they swim right up and say hi and they love food. So they're very food motivated. And um, if anyone's feeding them, they get really excited. Um, these guys are very, very personable. Do you want a worm? Want a worm? Nice job! You got it! Hey! She's like, I can't chew it now. I need to go someplace to, to eat it. Nice job! You got it. They are fantastic hunters. People don't often assume that um, turtles can hunt. But they are very good hunters. These guys are insectivores mostly. They eat some vegetation too, but a lot of bugs. You dropped it. That's okay. You showed them how you catch it. Good job. Um, hi, guys. Hi, Andy from West Henrietta. Hello. Hi, Chuck. Yeah, so we actually, um, something that I heard one time that I loved is we have a little outdoor kindergarten that used to be right down the street from us and they would go out in the woods and find frogs and the teachers of this class would te teach the kids to rub their hands on dirt or in leaves before touching any frogs or anything. Um, they called it getting your hands frog ready and um, that is actually really good advice because the oils on our hands can carry can be harmful to a lot of amphibians and reptiles. Um, and we also use hand soaps and lotions and things, that cleaners that might get on our hands and make them um, hard for, um, for our amphibians to deal with. And they absorb a lot through their skin. So that's why they would say, get your hands frog ready. And I thought that was so cute. It just meant basically rub your hands in dirt before <laughs> picking up um, a frog. But I think that's what Chuck is saying, but yeah. 
Thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you have any other questions about Blossom and Lotus, please let me know and I'm happy to answer them before we leave. But um, if you guys don't have any questions, we're gonna put these guys back um, and go feed all of our friends breakfast. Uh, Bertram is very upset as always um, that he hasn't been given his breakfast before, before this. Hi, you're so cute. Uh, something that's really cool about them is the painting um, and stripes actually goes through their eyes. So their eyes are even striped or even painted. Yeah. You're so pretty. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your weekend. Um, and we will see you again tomorrow with another one of our ambassador animals. Uh, but thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you again. Thanks guys.